I, th I think just the, the, the sheer sort of horror and focus on what's been going on in Libya meant that, um, and, and the speed with which his own allies within the regime have been deserting him, uh, means that uh, nobody wants to be seen out there um, defending him. Um, the, the Chinese, the Russians, the sorts of um, nations who are sometimes wary about um, the, these sorts of international condemnations, they, uh, they just decided that, um, that really they were going to go along with the consensus that this was just too um, egregious a crime that we were witnessing on the ground there. Now, you mentioned the Chinese there. Uh, this, these measures, uh, in, in and of themselves, they could be pretty unlikely to stop the bloodshed. Why can't the United Nations go any further? Well, as you, uh, as you say, the, the, the actions, the, 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 or rather the resolution itself, uh, probably will have a limited effect. I mean, Gaddafi is holed up in his proverbial bunker there with his family, and uh, whether their assets are being frozen and there's a travel ban on them is probably slightly irrelevant at the moment. Um, what the, uh, the nations behind this believe, which is the French and the British primarily, as you said, is that this will send a very powerful signal to maybe the inner, the inner circle around Gaddafi that, um, that you know, his time is up. Um, but they were also, uh, you know, very very aware of the limits of international action, sort of the sort of no-fly zones that were introduced over Iraq in the 1990s took a long time to be introduced, took a long time to be passed, and they didn't want to get bogged down in the sort of negotiations that are often so characteristic of the United Nations. So they went for a, a simple and, and very strongly worded condemnation, and as I say, really they're hoping that they will peel away some of Gaddafi's few remaining key allies.